the M4 Mac Mini versus the M2 MacBook Air. Who wins? Let's find out. Welcome back to the channel. So if you've been following the M4 Mac Mini back there, you've probably seen more benchmarks out there than any human should. Isn't that true? I mean, there's probably more benchmark videos out there now than reruns of the episodes of Friends on TV, and haven't we all seen enough of that? And then when you actually see the benchmarks, they're really kind of more synthetic benchmarks, kind of like Geekbench 6 scores, single core, multi-core, Cinebench scores, things like that. But it doesn't really equate to your kind of normal workload and real world use cases. And that's what I want to do in this video. So I thought about it. I'm like, hey, I have an M2 MacBook Air here with 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD. And I just bought back there the M4 Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD. So a light went on in my head. Now granted, it's a four watt LED bulb in there, but still, I was thinking about it and I'm like, this could make a good video. Now I get asked this question about 10 times a day and I'm dead serious on this. People always comment and they say, well, I have an M2 Air like this one over here or I have an M3 computer. Should I get the M4 Mac Mini? Now, before I did all the testing and stuff, I usually tell people, really not unless you want to help Apple build another donut shaped office building, maybe in New York this time, you probably shouldn't buy that. I mean, I already know that the M2 MacBook Air is probably good enough for my workload, but let's just figure out how much time we're going to save maybe throughout the year if I go ahead and start using the M4 back there. So let's go ahead and dive in. I think this will be a good video to kind of compare the two. I'm going to set up the configurations for you first. I'm going to kind of go to share my screen here, and then we're going to go through and just show you. First, we're going to do the M2 MacBook Air. We're going to go through and see how long it takes for my workflow. Then we're going to do the M4 Mac Mini back there, and then we're going to compare the two numbers. And at the end of the video, we're going to tell you, should you really be upgrading? Okay, so for the very first test here, I'm going to be testing, again, the M2 MacBook Air. It's actually sitting right here in this picture, and it's got 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD, but it's the M2 chip. Now, I use a program called CapCut for Mac. It's CapCut for Mac. It's a video editing tool, very similar to like Final Cut Pro and things like that, but it's a little bit different. You're probably going to have more efficiency out of Final Cut Pro on this test, but this is my real world example of showing you the difference between these two systems. So I'm just going to use what I use. I have all my 4K you know, clips in here. Now here's my timeline down here. You can see I have my, my audio down here, my, my kind of main clip here of 4K right there. Now I usually have up to two to three 4K clips in here or images on top of each other stacked. You can see them here as you go through this clip. It's going to kind of scroll through here. You can see how long this is. This is a 15 minute, you know, typical video of mine. Now I actually have some text in here. You can see here, this is the red layers that I actually have on this kind of orange layer. This is going to be something called stickers. Stickers are just kind of images I can throw in there like arrows and stuff like that. You can see them in here. And then actually up here, this purple is going to be some kind of um, effects. You can see it there. So if I scroll over this, look at the image up there. It's got kind of the grainy effect. So it's putting an effect over that, over the image there. And the effects are up here. You can actually add those as well. But I just wanted to show you that that's kind of what I do here in a typical thing. But you can see even on the M2, though, the scrubbing is very, very, you know, it's very, very good. Um, there's no problems whatsoever on scrubbing. Let me actually go in here. This has got a whole bunch of effects. But it doesn't drop any frames is what I'm saying. You don't really have any problems with scrubbing on this, this program. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and export this in a second. But before I do that, I just want to show you a couple other things here. So for Safari... I got this open, but I'm going to have five different uh, websites open, and I'm going to have them exactly the same on both computers. Um, Mac Rumors, 9 to 5 Mac, Wipekedia, uh, Google, and then ESPN all running in the background there, just kind of pretending like I was browsing the web at the time the test was going on. I'm going to have Photos open as well, just to have that open. I'm going to have Keynote open just like that, just to have that open as well. And then what else are we going to have? We're going to have Resource Monitor open or Activity Monitor, I'm sorry. You can see in here now, I'm not using any swap, even with all this stuff open. I'm only using about 11 gigabytes out of the 16. This is, again, the M2 MacBook Air. So we're going to go ahead and just minimize that. And uh, now what I plan on doing when I actually export this, and actually we'll go over here, I don't want to, um, you know, I want to make sure that I probably stop this. And right now I'm doing a screen capture. I want to stop that because I don't want that to affect the edit. Um, you know, it's being a screen capture up here. Um, so I want to kind of stop that and then I'll come back after it and just show you what the time was. So I'm going to set this to 4K here because that's what I have. And then now the bit rate, usually it's custom, but I'm going to make it higher. I'm going to put that on the same thing as the M4 Mac Mini when I test it. Codec is here and I'm going to do MP4 and then 24 frames per second because that's what I do. I know 60 frames is more challenging and 30 frames even, but that's what I do here, so that's what I'm going to be doing. It's a 3.1 gigabyte file it's going to create around there, and it says 15 point, it's basically 15 minutes on the dot. This is like 0.01 seconds, so it's, it's, it's right there. So 15 minutes on the dot. 
uh, maybe one second or so. And uh, so overall, we don't know how long this is gonna take, but we're gonna go ahead and time this in a second here. So without further ado, I'm gonna click export, then I'm gonna stop the actual screen capture and time this, and then I'll catch you on the other side for the M2 MacBook Air. So we're gonna click export, this is going, and we're gonna then stop the screen capture. Okay, so what do we get after that test? How long did the actual export take? It took right here five minutes and 49 seconds to export a 15 minute video. That's actually pretty good. So it's almost, it's close to about a third of the time, which is great, right? I mean, that's really, really fast enough for most people. And you saw how smooth it was in there. It didn't have any really drop frames on the actual, you know, the editing as far as scrubbing and stuff like that. So it was actually working really well. Now granted, I'm using 24 frames per second. I have multiple layers of 4K, but I know there's a lot more extravagant people out there. I mean, I'm not trying to be, you know, Steven Spielberg here. You can see by my videos. So mine are pretty simple, but overall it's a pretty good time. But now we're going to check out the M4 back there to see how much are we going to improve. Oh, actually, before I do that, take a look over here. So I took this screenshot while it was going on, the actual video uh, output, and you can see down here, it was using about 70, well, 78% of the CPU was still idle. So I guess it was using whatever the difference is there, 22%, but it was about 78% idle during that on the M2 down here, the Air. So just let, I, mean, I did the same test for the other one I'm going to, so let's just keep that in mind. It was about 78% of the CPU that was still available, which is actually pretty high. Okay, so now we actually are on the brand new M4 Mac Mini. You can see it right here, this giant screen here I have. Now the best thing about this is everything is exactly the same as the M2 test, everything. So I have the same version here. I actually had the M2, just one, one quick note, I had the M2 MacBook Air plugged in as well, um, just, just to make sure there was no issues with battery. Obviously the M2 or the M4 Mac Mini is plugged in. So you can see here, so I have the exact same timeline down here. Now I can say it's, you know, there's no there's no stuttering or anything like that. It's scrubbing is perfectly, you know, perfectly clean. In fact, I think it's actually a little bit smoother on here. You know, I don't think it dropped any frames on the M2 MacBook Air, but here it just seems like ultra smooth and buttery. So I think it's really good here, but it's exactly the same timeline. What I also did though, is I actually went in here and I opened up the exact same windows here. So if I go up here, you can see here that I have all of the same windows open, including you know Mac Rumors and, and 9to5Mac and all the same things, including ESPN, which you saw. So that should all be very similar. Let me go ahead and shut that down. Um, we also have the Photos app open as well, like we had talked about. Let me go ahead and shut that down. We also have, let me go over here, we have um, Keynote open, which we had open over there as well. And then we have the activity monitor for right now. And I'm gonna you know, take some screenshots of this as the video plays just to show you kind of where we are with everything. But you can see here, let me go ahead. As you move around, obviously, you're gonna be using a little bit more stuff. But let me go into the memory here. Same thing, so we're using about 12, you know, 12 gigabytes of the 16 right now. There's about four point, what is it? cache files here, zero swap again. This goes down into the 11 sometimes, and so that's with all the programs open and CapCut open as well in the background running this application. So everything's the same I wanted to show you, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and minimize that. So I'm gonna go over here, and we're gonna then, again, stop stop this obviously before we start the edit, but let me just go in here and just, I'm gonna name this, um, there we go, sorry about that. So there's that, and then we're gonna change this to 4K to match the other one. We're gonna change this to, MP4, because that's what it was before. We're gonna change this to 24 frames per second, as you can see here. And then what else do we have here? Oh, actually the, the bit rate we actually had higher as well. So if you look down here, we have 3.10, same there, and then 15, second, or 15 minutes and one second, that's the same as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this and we're gonna stop the recording over here. Then I'm gonna export this out and we're gonna time it just to see where it falls in. So let's go ahead and do this and see where this one comes in. Okay, so drum roll please. How long did the M4 Mac Mini take? It took actually four minutes and nine seconds, obviously. So that's actually faster, right? It's now we're down less than a third of the time of a 15 minute, it's a 15 minute video with all those layers and everything. It only took four minutes and nine seconds. And that's versus, let me just see here, that was versus the 549. So 409 versus 549 for the M2 down here. And that comes out to a 28.65, 28.65% or 28.65% faster. I don't know what I'm saying here. It's actually about close to 30% faster, you know, give or take there. So you guys have to make the determination if that's good enough for you. Obviously, it's a pretty big jump, but we're talking only like a minute and 40 seconds here. It's not going to change the world. I mean, I daydream longer than that just sitting in my chair here. So I don't know how much that's going to help a lot of people, but at least there's some real numbers on a real test that I do. 
Oh yeah, on the M4 Mac Mini, I wanted to show you this as well since I showed you the last one. This actually was, it had 88% or almost 89% of the CPU free here versus 78% on the MacBook Air M2 down here. So you still got a lot more CPU that's free, but it's not really doing anything anyway, right? It's, you know, obviously. So it, is that does that matter at all? I have no idea, but I just wanted to show it since I showed the last one. All right, so the question that those people always ask me is, should you be upgrading from an M2 or even an M3, you know, MacBook Air, whatever you have out there versus this new Mac Mini, the base model, let's say, but I have obviously the upgraded RAM, well, not the RAM, 16 gigs, but the upgraded SSD, which is a little bit faster. We showed that in a couple prior videos. So, I mean, the question is, is should we really be doing this? Well, I mean, even if I do 120 videos a year, which is a ton, right? And that's about what I do. It comes out to only like 3.33 hours of my savings time, all right? So I'm saving like three to four hours over that whole time on just the exports. Now, let's just triple that number because obviously other programs will be running. You're gonna be saving time here and there, but we're talking like 10 or 12 hours a year, roughly. I mean, it could be more than that, but I'm just giving you a rough estimate. Now, to tell you the truth, I sometimes sit on a Sunday and watch NFL football, and I watch the Bears lose in, in even crazier ways each week for more than 12 hours. So in my life, that doesn't really affect me. I mean, if you're thinking you should make $250 you know, dollars an hour or something, you can maybe justify that cost. But still, at the end of the day, it's still, you can see, it's not going to be like life-changing. Um, obviously, you know, there's some more important factors which we'll talk about, but overall, the performance is going to be good on both. It's just a lot better on there. But really, for someone like me that does, you know, edits like I do, I'm not still Steven Spielberg, like I said before, it's not going to really be life-changing. Now, actually, the test we did was on 16 gigs and 16 gigs, but one, one kind of scenario where you may want to upgrade from an M2 or an M3 Mac is if you only have 8 gigs of RAM. So if you only have 8 gigs of RAM and you're seeing some of your processes, you know, a lot of swapping used, things are slowing down, then it could be worth that upgrade because these things are pretty cheap back here, these M4s. So instead of kind of suffering through that, you might just want to do it to get the 16 gigs of RAM. And that's the case I would actually recommend upgrading. It's not so much on the CPU power alone, but if you have 8 gigs of RAM, then this is a buy for sure, and you're going to notice a massive difference, I think, in a lot of things that you do because that eight gigs makes a huge difference. Now I get it. Take a look at the thing. I mean, I'll show you some pictures of it. It's actually beautiful. I mean, you know, Apple gets us all worked up and stuff like that to go ahead and buy this thing. And you get some pleasure out of buying it, right? We all do. But to tell you the truth, you know, Apple has more money than like half the countries in the world, and I'm guessing you don't. So you got to weigh that option in there. So you got to kind of, you know, only buy things that you really need. Now I run kind of, you know, I have a channel, right? So I get to buy things every few months. At least that's what I tell my wife, right? You get the idea. Anyways, so I have a channel so I can buy more stuff because it's for my channel. Um, is she watching? No, that's fine. Um, and you get the idea. So, But I'm a little bit different than most people. So if it was me, I would probably keep the M2 back here and not upgrade. Even though I love that thing, it's one of my favorite computers of all time. It's one of the best deals of all time. But use your head here when you're upgrading. You know, Try to get a good cost and sell this thing. Otherwise, keep it, and then you can upgrade later. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up, and I hope you guys enjoy the content. At the end of the day, this is what I like to make, some kind of crazy content that nobody else does. You can take it or leave it. Hopefully, you'll take it and subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.